Hi everybody, it's John Lorch from DiscoverSkills.com and I'm here today to quickly talk about a little program that I ran across the internet the other day that I just think is as slick as can be. It's called Freesizer and the purpose of it is it allows you to quickly take one or more pictures that you have on your computer resize them so that you can send them across the internet somehow you know how a lot of times when you send pictures through email or you post them up on Facebook or put them other places there are size limitations you know if your pictures are, are too big because they came off of a, a multi megapixel digital camera then it's it's hard for you to send them or to upload them to places so the solution of course is to resize them to make them smaller but the problem is is that a lot of times we don't have a lot of time to go into a program like like Photoshop Elements and resize them the way that we normally would. Well this program really fits the bill because what it lets you do is simply select a folder that has some pictures in it and then with literally a click of your mouse uh, it lets you size all of those pictures at one time and you're done. So it's uh, it's pretty slick. Now I just want to mention to you before I get started here that um, I still am a big big fan of Photoshop Elements. I don't want you to think that because this program has come along and we discovered it that suddenly Photoshop Elements is no longer useful. This program's purpose in life is simply to resize and that's it. Photoshop Elements is an image editor. It allows you to fix, enhance, restore. It allows you to really work with your pictures. And so that's still the program that we use for almost all of our image editing types of situations. But this little free sizer software can be a really quick way for you to take a few pictures, size them, and then kick them out the door. So let's take a look at it. Now I'm already up here on the free sizer website. To get to this free sizer website, the address you can see right up here in the address bar is simply www.freesizer that's all one word dot com and you can see the name of it right here when you get to the site this is what you're going to see very simple page where it says, gives you a little bit of information um, they allow you to click over and see features and then you can see screenshots of of what the program looks like um, and so on and so forth but if we go back up here to the home page you can see that right here it says download and so all we have to do to download it is just to come over here to this download link okay now the easiest way to work with a download link whenever you have something to download I think anyway is to point your mouse at it and instead of just clicking to right click which gives you of course a menu whenever you right click you always get a menu don't you and on this menu you're going to see something that says save link as or save file as or sometimes in some browsers it says save target as in any case we are going to click this save as link here and it's going to open up our standard save as window let me just make this a little bit smaller here there we go now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out to my desktop which is really kind of a nice place to download because I can quickly find things out there I'm going to click on desktop over in my navigation panel I can see it already has a name here since I'm just copying a file from the internet down to me it already has a name so I'm, not, I'm, I'm just going to leave that the way it is and then I'm going to click save and it's such a small little program it doesn't take long at all to download and you can see here that I'm using uh, I'm actually using Google Chrome as my browser but it has a little download message here and it's all done everything's done so now we're gonna go out to our desktop and see if we can find that file that we downloaded so I'll come up here and X close this window and I apologize I have kind of a busy desktop out here today but uh, here is my download right here that I downloaded and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna double click and install it let's let's do that double click here's a little security message that comes up I'm using a, I'm actually this is a Windows security message that always comes up whenever you go to install a program from a little executable file like this and so we're just gonna say yeah everything is fine and click on run next it will come up to an installation screen 
And to be honest with you, this is this is the first time I've actually installed this on this computer, so this is going to be new to me too. But usually whenever you are installing software, you get a, a little wizard program where you simply have to click next a few times to install the program. So we read this and we come down here and click on next. Here's the user agreement that we have to accept. Click on next says this is where it's going to install it. That is fine. We click Next. It says it's going to create a shortcut in our Start menu. That's fine. We click on Next. It says do you want to create a desktop icon? We'll go ahead and let it do that today and click on Next. Review what you just said. That looks great. And we click Install. And there we go. It's already been installed. It's as easy as that. Now, it looks like as soon as the installation is done, it pulls back up our web browser and just thanks you and says, hey, if you need any help, here's some links you can click on. We're going to go ahead, though, and we're going to close this back down again. Here's our little completion window, and it says launch FreeSizer. Well, what the heck? We might as well go ahead and leave that checked and click Finish, and that's going to jump us right into the program. And there it is. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to step through um, some of the core features of this program and just the basics of how to use it. It, you know, and honestly, it really is a pretty simple program to use, and so it isn't like it's going to take a huge amount of instruction here. But well, we'll step we'll step through some of the basic things just so you have an idea of what you're going to get yourself into. Okay, now the first thing we're going to notice here is that there are three tabs at the top. One says Profile. That's what we're looking at right now. And this is sort of your main screen. And then we have a Settings screen, which this is where we set um, basically the parameters on how we want the images resized. And then there's an About screen that just says, you know, do you want to go visit the website and blah, blah, blah. So let's go back over here to Profile. And first thing we need to do is drag and drop your pictures here. And you can see there's this little space that, in essence, what we need to do is move this window over kind of to the side of our screen and then open up our picture folder and start dragging pictures into this window. So let's go ahead and do that. Now what I'm going to do on my desktop is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go to my libraries or my you can either go to my computer or libraries. I'm going to go to libraries and open that. Okay. And this is Windows 7 that I'm using today but you can see that in Windows 7 over on the left I have my navigation tree and so this is where I need to know where my pictures are which is a whole nother story right <laughs> but uh, today we're just going to assume that we know where they are and in my case uh, if I go to my libraries and if I twirl out pictures and then twirl out my pictures I have a folder here that says pictures to size and I've got some pictures in there that I want to size. So I put them into a folder together. So we will click and there they are. Now all I really need to do is start dragging them over and dropping them into this window here. So I'm going to go to this first one, click, drag, drop it. Do the second one. And if you're wondering, can I use that window trick where I select more than one picture at a time by using either the control button or the shift key, can I do that? And the answer is yes, I can. So let's let's use control in this case. So we'll click here, hold down control, click there, click there. Notice we've got all three selected. Now I just go to one of them and I start dragging. You can see the little icon says three on it. Come over here, actually, do you see that little icon says three? There they are. Drag them right into this window and drop them. And there we go, they all got added. So. I'm pretty much done with that. And here we are. We've got them all selected here. Okay. Now, the next thing we need to do in this window, as long as we're looking at it here, is select resizing profile. A profile simply is a set of pre set up parameters depending upon what you're trying to do. So, for example, if we were going to email these, we could choose email. If we were going to instant message them, we choose this one. If we were going to upload them to Facebook or some other social network, we choose here. If we were going to put them onto an iPhone or an iPod, we choose here. If we want to leave them just the original size, just compress them down so they're smaller files, we could choose here. Or we could choose custom, which means we set everything ourselves. 
Um, I don't know if you noticed, but as I was clicking on each one of these over here, this was changing. This column stuff was changing. So let's assume today that we're going to do email. Let's go ahead and click on email. And you can see that when we chose an email, the profile says that if our original dimensions are this big, we are going to make everything down to something smaller like 800 by something. Okay, And the reason that these are different is because some of these pictures are actually on their side. They're actually either landscape or portrait. And this program figures that out. And if we want to send through email and want to get the size of our pictures down to about 800 pixels so that they will fit the width of most people's computer screens, you can see that it's automatically set the sizes for each one of those pictures I put in there, depending upon if they're portrait or landscape. It shows me the original file size, and then it shows me the estimated size when we get done. So you can see that by choosing email, Here's my original stuff. Here's what it's going to happen afterwards. I'm doing a really good job of resizing these to something smaller. Now, something else that's kind of cool on this screen is that one, once I've gone through and I've chosen my profile and I've got my pictures here, if I, um, if I come up and click on a picture, I've got a button that says Preview with Selected Profile. And so if I click it, it actually opens up a window showing me what my picture is going to look like after it's been resized to something smaller. And you can see down in the corner here it says resize from 3,803 kilobytes to 100 kilobytes with the email profile. But I'm seeing what I'm going to get here. And that's kind of cool that you can, you can actually preview what you're going to get. Okay. Now, before we go ahead and do this, because really right now we're done, we're ready to go right here, we could click Start Resizing, I want to take you to the Settings tab where you can actually make some changes to what's happening here. And you can see that it gives you a little note here that says Free Sizer will never overwrite or change your original images. By default, which means but that you know through its factory settings, it will save them in the same folder with the underscore resized name appended to the file name. So you can see right down here that says for each one it creates, each new file that it creates, it's actually going to put an underscore and the word resized after it. You can change this to whatever you want. Like I could, for example, change this to email. If these are actually going to be emailed, I could change this to email. And that's going to get appended onto the end of it. So the point is, though, it's going to create a new file, and this is going to be the new file name. You can, also, you can also choose, again, to save it to the same folder they come from, or you can put it into a different folder if you want to. And then it says, keep original file date. That will simply mean that if somebody looks at the date of the file, it'll actually be the date that you took the picture, or, or that the file was scanned in, or whatever you did. Okay. In addition, for the profile settings, remember we chose, back here we chose email for the profile, and it automatically put these new dimensions in. Well, if we wanted to, we could come over here and we could do this manually ourselves. We could decide how tall, how wide we wanted it, what quality setting we wanted it set to. And if you decide to do that, keep in mind that what the program will actually do is it will not strictly make a picture a certain size that you put in here. It's simply going to, you know, if we put in, for example, a thousand, it simply means that it's going to look at your pictures it's going to resize them to a thousand wide or a thousand tall depending on whether they're portrait or landscape but it's going to keep the aspect ratio the same so that the picture doesn't distort which which kind of means that your pictures aren't going to turn out exactly 1000 wide and maybe a little bit less than that a little bit more whatever it's going to keep the right aspect ratio it just simply means it's going to make them a lot smaller than probably what they are Okay, and then from a quality perspective, you know, medium is always a good quality when it comes to JPEG. Um, you can do high quality, um, you can do original quality, maybe it'll look a little bit better, for, but for most purposes on the computer screen when people are viewing them, medium quality is just fine. So th the point is, you've got some things you can change here, but you know what, you don't have to. We could simply go back to this screen, and we could have simply stayed right on this screen and done nothing more. Okay, so now we've gone through, we've we've chosen this profile, we've got our pictures in here. Let's just click on Start Resizing now. Here we go. 
You see how quickly that happened? Finished resizing five images, and this is how many were saved. I mean, that was really fast. Let's click OK here. I'm going to go back out to my folder window, and we will go over here to Pictures and Twirl It Out, and My Pictures and Twirl It Out, and down here to Pictures to Size, and if we look here, you'll see that here's the original pictures. But now we have some pictures that say Jack Baseball email, group email, this camera number email, so on and so forth here. In fact, let me change the view to details. Okay, and you can see here. Here, for example, is the original Jack Baseball picture which was a little about 3.8 megabytes in size okay and here is the Jack baseball email picture look how much smaller that is now I'm gonna do one other little thing here so I can make a comparison notice that on these column headings in my folder window if I mouse over a column heading and right click I can actually turn things off and on and I'm going to turn on this thing that says dimensions so that we can see the dimensions here. Okay, look at this though. Here's the original dimensions we had. Here are the new resized dimensions. These pictures now are ready for us to email. See how slick that was? See how quickly we were able to do that? So the thing is, is that when you have this window come up, you drag your pictures into this little window here. Okay, you choose the profile that best fits what you're trying to do you click start resizing and what you end up with is new pictures newly saved files that are ready to go that are ready to do what you need to have them do and that is how freesizer works now I hope you've enjoyed that today um, I know that I'm gonna have some fun with this program and just just as always if you've got any questions or if you'd like to see some other of the great videos that we do you can visit our website www.discoverskills.com and of course you can always get a hold of me by email my email address is jlortz at discoverskills.com so that's it for now i hope you've enjoyed this and we will see you in the next video